that you need to make. So several parts, so we'll work on each individual part and then look to bring it all into an assembly. So the first part that we'll have a go at making is not this one because I think it looks uh, a little bit rather complicated to begin with. So we'll start off with this angle. It in just takes a little while to load up, um, but hopefully you won't have this sort of issue on your computer. So it's a little L bracket or an angle bracket that's used to support um, the arm of the lamp that you should have seen previously. So this has been created previously by Mr. Thwelin. So if we have a look at the bracket drawing, and I'm just going to pick out some key dimensions. So if I was recreating this um, for manufacture, this is the sort of drawing, orthographic drawing in third angle um, that I'd be using to generate the part. Um, okay, so let's pick out some key dimensions to begin with. So this is, which is 25. So I'm going to start off just by drawing this L shape. So to start off, click on create document and the entire document, we're just going to call lamp. I'm just going to put my initials at the end of it. And then within that drawing, down at the bottom, when it comes up, you'll see that it's called um, part. Well, I could rename that. So I'll rename that L bracket or bracket. So down at the bottom, when the studio loads, right click, rename, bracket. Okay, so I need to think about what plane I want to draw on to make this part. So there's no def definite answer to this, but for me, it makes sense to draw this L bracket, first of all, on the, I've got to think about this now. Um, yeah, let's draw it on the front. So if I click on front, and then up on the little dice, view at front, I can go straight in to create my sketch, and I'm going to make the L. So the L dimensions were 35 high and 25 wide. So straight line tool, use the central axis or the planes to help me draw it. So you can see now that it's snapping to the center. So click, draw the L, don't worry too much about the dimensions because you're going to use the dimension tool afterwards. So these are, right click escape line, these are the external dimensions to the L shape. I'll show you what I mean by external in a moment. So let's start off by dimensioning these two pieces. So let's drag out on this first line. Let's make that 35. Now you'll see that the other line, when I press enter, will resize accordingly to scale, but actually I need to put a dimension on that one as well. So 25. Okay, so the thickness of the material was three millimeters. And I can tell from this drawing, um, if I look at this projection here, that's three millimeters going up. So if I go back to my drawing, there's a couple of different ways that you could do this. You could use the offset tool, but let's just get used to drawing and using the scissors to do snips first of all. So I'm gonna come out. And I'm just gonna tell you what, we'll just roughly draw an L. You notice there now how it's snapping so that it's parallel. If I just bring it out, you can see that isn't parallel. So use the software to help you come across. You see there now it's snapping. Okay. If I just extend that line, I'll just show you what I mean by uh, trimming it. So escape line, back to the straight line. And I'm going to purposefully create this, allow it to snap so you can see that that's touching the line. Right click again to escape line. Use the center mouse button to zoom in and out if you need to. Now I've got this little line here that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to use the trim tool, hover over it. You can see that that's selected. I haven't pressed anything yet. I'm just hovering over it. Click, that's now trimmed. So what I now need to do is give this some key dimensions. Well, the thickness of this L bracket is three. Three, enter, 
And there's two different ways that I can dimension this. I can click and click and drag up, or I can just press click and drag up on that line. Change that to three. And then green tick. So if I click on view, isometric, you'll now see that I've got the basis of my L bracket. But to make that 3D, I need to do an extrusion. So let's just go back to the drawing to check the thickness or the depth of it. Well, I can see that it's 25 going out this way, but the width of um, the bracket itself as well, or maybe the depth of the bracket is 25. So if I go back, when I come to do an extrusion, click on the sketch, use this dialog box to help you, click on the sketch that I want to extrude, and conveniently, just by chance, it's already set to a depth of 25. Now, before you click on OK, I would advise you, rather than just coming out in one direction, to make it symmetrical. Reason being, it then centres on all of these axes. Okay, so when you come to do your assembly, it'll just make it a little bit easier. So, green tick. This might be a good idea just to take a pause, but we'll carry on with the rest of our drawing. So, going back... Um, I think what we'll do now is create these two holes. Now, there's a number of different ways to create the two holes, but what I'd like you to do is just get more and more familiar with doing sketches and extrusions. So the way that I'm going to do it is we're going to click on this face, um, view it from the right plane, click on Sketch. So I've got that face selected. I'm now in Sketch mode. Center point circle. So in the last step where I said make it symmetrical, this has now helped me because I've found the center line of the bracket. So if I click and draw that circle and dimension it, so I know from the previous drawing, you can go back and check, um, that is a six mil diameter. So you can press the number and press enter. And I know that the center point, that's how you dimension a circle, center point to the top is eight millimeters. Okay, so I don't actually need to dimension it from the edge to there because when I started drawing it, snap to the center. That's why wherever you can, try to draw your thing symmetrical. Um, and think about the directions of the planes and, and what faces you're drawing on. So I'm going to press green tick there. And let's do the sketch on this surface as well. Let's just check the dimensions of this one. So I can see that it is in the centre. And it's 12.5 millimetres off the edge. And again, it's got a diameter of 6. So I'm going to click on this face. Sketch, so I can view it from the top. Zoom in just to make it a little bit easier. Center point circle. There's the center. Don't worry about too much about the dimensions because I'm going to enter in the exact dimensions afterwards. So six and enter. And on that, drawing it was 12.5 millimeters back so center point of the circle to the edge of the L bracket 12 point or dot 5 and enter and green tick so let's be with back in isometric so I can now see those two circles positioned ready to make my holes so again back to the extrude Click on remove and I'm going to select this circle and press green tick. So that's gone right through the face and I'm going to click on extrude again. Remove and select that face again. Now you can enter in a specific dimension but I can see that it goes all the way through the path so I'm not too bothered about changing that dimension there. So green tick. As you add the features, you'll notice in your feature tree on the left-hand side, these are the sketches that I've done. So I did my L, 
bracket sort of sketch to begin with. I did the circle on that face, and I did the circle on that face, and I've got three extrudes. So that makes sense. You could name these, um, but on a sort of relatively simple part, it's, I wouldn't say it's necessary. So let's go back to the drawing and see what else we need to do. So on the drawing, although it's not detailed um, as such with any dimensions, we can see we've just got some little chamfers on these edges, and I'm going to fill it on the outside edge and on the inside edge. So let's start with doing the chamfers because they all look the same. So select the chamfer tool. Wait for the dialog box to open up. Select the entities to chamfer. So I'm interested in that edge. So just give the computer a little bit of time as you hover over to select the correct edge. Don't rush it. I can see now that that is the correct edge. Click. I've got that edge visible to me as well. Click. At this point, I'm just going to rotate it around so that I can see the other two edges. So using the right mouse button, click and click down below. So I'm going to bring it back into isometric mode before I press the green tick because I think these chamfers are probably a little bit too big. So let's reduce that in half. So let's add a two point in front, 2.5. Press enter. I'm quite happy with that. So green tick. Normally that would be detailed in your drawing, um, but that's perfectly fine. So that's a chamfer. I'm now going to add a fillet or two different fillets to um, this edge running across the back and this edge running across the front. And I'm going to do that as two separate fillets. Reason being, when you bend a piece of uh, sheet metal, so if it was sheet steel or I think it's sheet aluminium in this case, when you bend it, you'd have a bigger radius on the outside or a bigger fillet on the outside and a smaller radius or a smaller fillet on the inside. So let's go with fillet. Now the edge that I want to use isn't visible, so just use the right mouse button to rotate around. That's the outside edge. Too big. Let's bring that down. I'm just going to view it from the side. Probably a bit too big. I'll be honest with you. I don't know what the science is in, is in cal calculating this radius. So I'm just going to go by eye for now. Yeah, I'm quite happy with three on the external radius. Let's go fill it. Three internal. Again, I'm just going to view it from the front. Let's try this at two probably one yeah that kind of looks a little bit more realistic now as in a, a bend so green tick and view isometric so let's just check on the drawing if I missed out any detail no looks okay for me oh just noticed on the drawing, we've got a three by three chamfer. Um, so I could go back now and edit this chamfer. Missed that dimension, so I put 2.5. So that's quite a good exercise, actually. Even if you make a mistake, you can go back in and edit any one of these features. So I'll show you that again. Right click, edit. And I can change that to three. green tick. So that's the first part of the um, lamp drawn, that's the first part I can see down at the bottom. So to work on my next part I would just go plus, insert new element and create parts 